Okay, I want to say a little bit more about matrix multiplication because it's such an important part of linear algebra. First of all, we have matrix vector multiplication. And in the text, we have this example. 2 by 2 matrix times this vector is, uh, comes up with this. Now, this is a more general way of looking at it. 2 by 2 matrix, or PQRS, times XY. The result is a vector, just like the vector that's being multiplied. And the resulting vector can be thought of as a linear combination of the columns of the matrix, where the coefficients in the linear combination are the entries of the vector. So we're combining columns of the matrix using the vector. Here I have a 3 by 3 example of particular numbers. Here this vector, this matrix times this vector. And you can see first column of the matrix times the first number in the vector plus second column in the matrix times second number in the vector plus third column in the matrix times third number in the vector. And we have this linear combination which we can write this way. Perhaps when you've done matrix vector multiplication you know that you don't really write this way, you just compute it entry by entry. Uh, the, you go uh, 2 times 4 plus 1 times 2 plus 3 times 3 to get the first entry. So practically when we do computations we do it entry by entry. Uh, like the first entry is this times this, second entry is this times this, third entry this times this. All right now, what about matrix matrix multiplication? Well, let's first imagine multiplying this resulting vector by another matrix. So again, I've given a specific example just because it's easier to work with numbers. All right, so I take this same product here, same product as I have above here. Let's do it here. Right? Same product as this one. And then I multiply that on the left by another matrix. All right? So here I'm just rewriting the same linear combination that I have up here and putting this matrix in front. All right, so what happens when I multiply this matrix here by this linear combination, which is a vector? All right, so it's multiplying all of these together, but really I can break up that operation in the following way. When I multiply this matrix times this vector, I, I can break that vector up into pieces. First piece multiply this matrix times this vector, then this matrix times this vector, then this matrix times this vector, and add them all together. Now further I can rewrite that. I can rewrite this vector. I can take the 2 out to the right. All right 2 times 416 is the same as 416 times 2. And because these are all linear operations, uh, it's okay to to take the two out. And I can reassociate, meaning instead of multiplying these two first and then this one, I can multiply this matrix times this vector and then multiply the result by two. Same with the second part. I've broken out this part of the vector separately. Take the one to the other side, reassociate so I multiply this matrix times this vector first, and then multiply the result by the coefficient 1. Same with the third part, this third piece of the vector. I can move the 3 to the other side, doesn't change anything, and then I reassociate, multiply this matrix times this vector. Now to be completely rigorous, I would have to prove some more things, but you can see the idea. All I'm doing is rearranging and reassociating. Alright, so what do we have here? In fact, here we have a vector, this here is a vector, times 2. Now 2 was the first component of my original vector. Here I have another vector. If I multiply this out, I'm going to get a vector because matrix times vector is a vector. This vector times 1, where 1 was the second component of my original vector. Same thing here, I have a vector times the third component of my original vector. Okay. So we have Vector here times component, vector here times second component, vector here times third component. Now that's reminiscent of my original matrix vector multiplication. Where up here, for instance, 
Here I had the first matrix columns times 2, plus the second matrix column times 1, plus the third matrix column times 3, two, times, the, 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 times 3. All right, so what I have here now is I can make this, this, and this be three columns of a matrix. And then this whole expression here becomes a matrix vector multiplication. Okay, so I'm taking this part here, this matrix times this vector, and making that the first column of a new matrix. I'm taking this matrix times the second column of my matrix here, that's the second column of my original left-hand matrix, and making that the second column of a new matrix. Here I'm taking the matrix here times the third column, and I'm making a third column of a resulting matrix. Okay, So I've rewritten my result as a single matrix times a vector. So what I've done is I've actually collapsed these two matrices, I've collapsed these two matrices into a single matrix. A single matrix. So we call this the product of these two matrices. So this is a matrix product here. These three here are the matrix plot product. Now, how is this matrix product form? Well, I did matrix vector multiplication separately on each of the columns of the second matrix. All right. So, matrix matrix multiplication amounts to matrix vector multiplication separately on each column of the second matrix. And this shows me that matrix matrix multiplication can be performed column by column. So, if you know how to do matrix vector multiplication, Matrix matrix multiplication is just uh, an easy extension. I look at the first column of my second matrix, and then I multiply the left-hand matrix by that first column. Right? This, this left-hand matrix times the first column on my right-hand matrix. Then for the second column, I take my left-hand matrix times the second column on my right-hand matrix. Third column, third matrix, uh, left-hand matrix times the third column on my right-hand matrix. Now, you can put these results entry by entry, and you do certainly need practice in the mechanical skill of finding this matrix matrix product. But I just wanted to give that additional background of how you find a matrix matrix product. One more thing I do want to mention is the identity matrix. Let me do a very simple example. Uh, I'll do 2, 3, 1, 4 times the identity matrix. Identity matrix is the matrix that has ones on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. It has ones on diagonal and zeros elsewhere. All right, now, when I do this multiplication, as I said, I can consider this as a matrix 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 vector multiplication sorry that's a one two three one four times the first column and that's going to be the first column of my result then the second column of my result is going to be two three one four times the second column all right now what's the result when i take this product here well matrix vector Multiplication, that's going to be 2 times 1 plus 3 times 0 here. Then this one's going to be 1 times 1 plus 4 times 0. Sorry, that's a 1. And that's the first column of my result. Second column of my result is going to be 2 times 0 plus 3 times 1. Second column is going to be 1 times 0 plus 4 times 1. And the result is 2, 3, 1, 4. So I get the original matrix back again. Okay. So in general, if I take some matrix M times the identity matrix, that gives me M. Right. You saw in the 2 by 2 case, but in fact, the same type of computation will hold for any matrix. It's not a proof, but it's just an indication of why it's true. All right, on the other hand, if I take the identity matrix 
times any matrix on this side. Let's do another one, 7, 6, 5, 4. I can write that as 1, 0, 0, 1 times 7, 5. And then the second column is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1 times 6, 4. So 0 there. And you can work that out and find out that, in fact, that gives me 7, 5, 6, 4. So in general, we also have im equals m. In general, im equals m. Okay? So the identity matrix is like 1 in ordinary algebra. If you multiply anything by 1, it doesn't change. If I multiply any matrix times the identity matrix, that matrix won't change. Now, the identity matrix has to be the right size <clears throat> in order to multiply. The sizes of the matrices have to be compatible. But as long as you have the right size, then uh, the matrix multiplication goes through. What do I mean by compatible? For instance, this identity matrix could not be a 3 by 3 identity matrix to multiply a 2 by 2. That just doesn't work. In fact, the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix in order for the matrix multiplication to be compatible. Uh, but we see that when they are compatible, we get this identity, which is a very useful identity. Okay, that's it.